and welcome to this Henry Schein dental video on some new techniques in dental technology. Uh, my name is Dr. Stephen Vorholt. I am a board certified dental implantologist through the American Board of Oral Implantology and I work full time at Implant Pathway down in Tempe, Arizona as a surgical mentor and one of the lead clinical instructors. And today we're going to talk about leveraging dental technology um, and how it's changed so much in the last couple of years uh, and what we can do when it comes to dental implant restorations. Because we know that patients are most interested on when they're going to get teeth. And one of the biggest advances in dental implants has been the new design of dental implant lines that are the macro geometry is much more aggressive and that allows for more stability at placement. And all of that to say that we can load these implants sooner uh, with immediate temporary so the patients can leave with teeth, even if they're uh, mostly for looks and not for function. Uh, we want our patients to leave with something that day so that they can smile uh, and chew and be comfortable and confident. And one of the things that we've noticed over the last even three years is that 3D printing technology has exploded when it comes to all the different things that we can do to leverage that technology. So only a short couple of years ago, 3D printing was something that only some labs were doing. And nowadays with sprint rays, uh, infrastructure, and platforms, um, 3D printing is coming into the dental practice, into private practice. And even in the short couple of years that sprint ray has been around, the amount of different resin profiles and different uh, things that we can accomplish in office has really grown. And their most recent uh, release in 2021 was the Onyx resin. And the Onyx resin is a nano ceramic hybrid resin. So it's 45% ceramic material, not all acrylic resin. And that allows us a lot more options on more either longer term temporaries or in some cases even a final prosthetic. So this material is much more durable it shines up really nice and it gives us some options whether we're talking about all on X like the name implies or even uh, short term short term bridges uh, temporaries and that sort of thing so today I have a case that I'd like to showcase um, that shows that how we leverage this technology to give a patient a tooth um, the day we place the implant um, what you'll see focused on here is the sprint race pro 55 um, that you see on the right of the video. Uh, the Pro 55 is a very accurate in-office printer, 55 microns in the XY. Um, their other offering, the Pro 95, is also an excellent printer. But when we're talking about restorations, whether it's dentures, full arch bridges, or these temporary shells, um, the 55's accuracy is paramount and also makes for a much more uh, tooth-like print, something that we're going to actually put in uh, the patient's mouth. It currently comes in shades A1, B1, and Bleach, um, which we all know is the only shades that patients think uh, belongs in their mouth. So let's take a look at a case where we're going to do a single implant and we're going to utilize and leverage this new resin technology so that the patient can leave with something that we are not concerned is going to break in the interim healing time. So here we have our patient who presents with uh, partial edentulism and the maxillary and mandible. Um, we're going to be focusing mostly on the upper right of the patient, the tooth number five, even though there are several areas of concern. Um, today's surgical uh, case study is going to take a look at that. So here we have a patient has beautiful tissue, nice healthy thick tissue. You can see the stippling here in this photo. Um, we have a posterior occlusal loss, so we're missing several teeth on the bottom. Uh, this patient is in the middle of a full mouth rehab. We're going to be doing implants on the bottom and restoring all the teeth with crowns to reset the VDO. Uh, take a look at the occlusal photo and you'll see number five on the left side of our screen. You can see the soft and hard tissue defect from when the tooth was removed. Luckily, the way the patient healed, there's actually ample bone to place a dental implant in a restoratively driven position. So we're going to plan our implant to go uh, right in the middle of the central groove of tooth number five and uh, we will have a mocked up temp ready to go. So we'll take one more look here from the side and once again nice healthy tissue, thick tissue um, and the site uh, is well ready for a dental implant. So 
I'm going to utilize and leverage my digital lab partner, uh, Mark, who works with me. And I'm going to send Mark several things. I'm going to say, Mark, I want to have a temporary ready to load for this patient. So I'm going to place the implant fully guided so that him and I both know where the implant is going to be. And therefore, we know where the temporary restoration uh, needs to be designed to. So the first thing I'm going to send Mark is an upper STL scan. An STL scan is simply a digital image um, a 3D file, if you will, of the patient's mouth. This one was scanned with a Serona Serac Prime scan. Um, so here we have a really nice 3D rendering that we can then stitch to the patient's CBCT uh, and Mark can utilize in 3Shape Implant Studio to design uh, and do wax ups and so on. So the upper full arch STL is going to be sent to the lab and also the lower for the bite. So here we can see number five, the articulation. We got plenty of space. Um, to put an implant crown here. Uh, so we send the lower and a fully articulated bite. And then I went ahead and designed the guide myself and I utilized uh, Acteon's AIS 3D guided software. So the guide was exported. I sent that also to Mark just so Mark knew exactly where I was planning on putting the implant. So here you can see the guide overlaid on the upper maxillary STL. And here it is from the side. So pretty standard we're going to put the implant pretty much right in the middle of that edentulous span and then most importantly I'm also going to send my digital lab tech the implant position so I was able to export the implant or at least the cylinder that represents the implant and most importantly the implants angle and Mark can use this to extrapolate the exact path of insertion um, and path of draw of the implant. That's going to be very important when he decides how to design the temporary. So let's take a look at what Mark did next. So I've gone ahead and sped this video up that Mark sent me uh, by 10 times. And you can see Mark is designing the ideal Pontic. And you saw earlier those um, paralleling pins, if you will. That was the extrapolated implant position. So Mark knows exactly the angle that I'm planning on putting my implant in so that he can make sure when he does the temporary Pontic space um, that it's lined up uh, exactly where it needs to be. The alternative to this is simply have a wax up and do a surgical like suck down, like an Essex suck down. But it's messy, it requires bisacryl, which is still not a nanoceramic like we're going to use with the Onyx resin, and it requires a little bit more chair time than what you're going to see showcased in this video. So as Mark completes the anatomy uh, of this beautiful Ponic and makes it a little bit ovate, what we're going to see next is that he marks the outline of the adjacent teeth. And what Mark and I decided was to make essentially a Maryland jig, uh, Maryland bridge jig. So we're going to have the adjacent teeth are going to have kind of onlays. Um, so when we print the onlay bridge, we'll be able to place this in the patient's mouth, assured that it's in the exact position we want because we're resting on hard tissue stops, the adjacent teeth four and number six. And we're going to use that to kind of hold the vertical and have the pontic tooth in the right spot. So now Mark's bringing in my guide in that implant position. And here you can see he's going to make a cylinder to delete or extrapolate a hole through the ponic. And that hole is four millimeters, which gives me a millimeter on each side of my temporary cylinder. So now he's in Rayware, which is Sprint Ray's 3D printing software. And he's going to bring in that little bridge and print that in the Onyx resin. Now you'll notice he has Sprint Ray Surgical Guide 2 selected because we were doing this during beta. So now there'd be an Onyx resin in your print profiles. He's going to place the Intaglio up away from the print platform so that we have no supports underneath where the bridge is actually going to seat in the patient's mouth. So all of our supports will be on the external surface that we can easily polish and remove. And you can see the hole there that is lined up exactly with the implant planned for fully guided. He's going to pick the Pro 55, 100 micron, Z layer or vertical thickness, and he's going to go ahead and cue this up to the printer. Here you'll see once it's queued, it shows up in the dashboard. 23 minutes, it'll tell you, and you just hit start. 
you know, we're going to have our Pro 55 platform lowered into the Onyx ceramic resin. And 23 minutes later, the print platform will rise, and there we have our little tiny mini bridge. So, on to the surgical day. Patient comes back, full thickness flap, slightly lingual incision on the occlusal, and we're going to fully expose the bone and place our guide. So here's our guide fully placed. You see we have a throat pack in place. The guide is actually helping to hold the flap edges back as well. So the guide is fully seated. We can confirm that with the windows, that the cusp tips are fully through the windows. And then we're using the BioHorizons Tapered Pro system. So this is their fully guided kit. It's a keyed kit. And here you can see the 2.0 sleeve. Uh, the 2.0 key is in the sleeve and the 2.0 by 21 millimeter drill is going to go through and be a fully guided. Once the osteotomy is complete, it goes through with a fully guided carrier, which means the implant actually goes through the guide. Okay, so everything is fully guided. This is really important when you're doing something like this where you need it to be in the exact vertical position that I told Mark it's going to be in. So we're going to confirm that this is exactly where it was planned. And here's our final placement. So about half a millimeter subcrestal to the arch, uh, right in the middle of the edential span. We go ahead and we put our peak temporary cylinder, which is a three millimeter uh, wide cylinder, three millimeter diameter. Um, and Mark, if you remember, put a four millimeter hole in our pontic. So here is that temp cylinder from the side. You can see perfectly parallel, fully guided placement uh, to the contacts adjacent on number four and six. And then with no adjustment whatsoever, the Onyx printed Maryland jig is seated over four and six, and you can see uh, the hole that Mark put through the ponic slips right over the top of our temporary peak cylinder. The cylinder is looted to the temporary with uh, a bulk flowable. So the bulk flowable is simply put in and cured. You can see there's a little bit underneath the gingiva. Not going to be a problem because we're going to remove this and clean everything up. So here it is removed. And you can see we're going to then fix the contour that goes from that margin that you can see on the peak cylinder to the margin of our pontic. And those wings that we just used, the onlay wings, are simply sacrificial. They'll be uh, trimmed off, polished off. So here's our final temporary. You can see a straight or slightly convex uh, contour on the lingual. It's the same on the mesial and distal. And on the buckle, you're going to have what's generally referred to as the S-curve or a slight concavity that leads to a convexity. And that's to help support the buccal tissue. So nicely, highly polished, that's just sitting on an analog so that we can get a nice high polish. And you can see how nicely the Onyx resin does polish up. So here it is back in the mouth. The temp cylinder is cut down uh, to be out of occlusion. And the tooth is also checked to be out of occlusion. You can see two vertical mattress sutures on either side just to, to kind of pin the tissue back. And then here it is from the side. So we expect that tissue to fill in the gap on the mesial there. We'll fill in nicely with the papilla, just like it already did on the distal. Um, patient will be in this temporary for three and a half months. And when he comes back, this will be removed. The gingiva will be perfectly formed, a nice digital or analog impression to capture that. And we can make a crown that mimics that subgingival contour that we've already designed in our temporary. So much faster, uh, much more accurate, and a much more beautiful restoration that's uh, lab designed rather than using an Essex um, that can be a little sloppy and can be a little bit uh, a lot more chair time for sure. So uh, I want to say thank you for checking out this video and hopefully you are able to look into Sprint Ray and how 3D printing in your office can be something that you can leverage for your patients and your practice.